maybe some people are not here because they thought they might come back. <laughs> um, but um, I think that's a chicken. Um, familiarity does not breed contempt, it breeds familiarity. Um, anyway, I brought them back with, uh, with branches, so they are somewhat arranged. A number of you walked in here and immediately said some things that are uh, wonderful. Because the breadth of your brilliant experience, like you said, even without looking at anything I had over here, uh, one person said lyrical, I won't say who said what. Another said Renaissance, another um, said, or I, Q, Pompeii. Um, and I was not deliberately setting up things like that, but I have all these examples here of apples in branch situation. The Pompeii piece is here, so some of them the piece, the abandon a little towards that um, kind of uh, complex um, um, display uh, against a, a kind of fantasy wall, which is something I want to encourage. If you want to um, turn this into much more of a landscape than it may look like to you, but it is a bit of in outdoors, indoors, with branches, contrived, again, another contrivance to keep your focus working hard. Um, so uh, these are different uses. This Worthington Whitridge, I mean, what a great name. In fact, that's not the third. Yes, it's Thomas Worthington Whitridge. What? Sharp eyes. Sharp eyes. So these are things, apples in the setting, very much like what we have here. Uh, you have to borrow pieces to put it together. Um, so that's the first thing. The, there are photographs, very rough photographs, of similar things that I put out, not for you necessarily to paint from, unless somebody wanted to, but, um, but again, to do a little eye com comprehension thing. When, when, you can, when you work from a photograph, or you can just look at a photograph, you are looking at something that's two-dimensional. When you're looking at these, they're three-dimensional. Therefore, your process of getting that to your paper in two dimensions has to go through that translation. Therefore, I put these pictures out so you just look at them, because a photograph fills in, <coughs> literally, too, sometimes the color is you know, much more intense, exaggerated, the values can be uh, sharper. But it also, um, it, Clearly, it has to fill in the space uh, because you don't, you know, the space that you see when you look at one of those things with branches coming at you or around and an apple in front, but there is um, atmospheric and true space, breathing space between them. You can go under, over, around um, visually, and you literally could just come up and look at that. But when you look at a photograph, it has been done for you. These things go into what you translate into your painting. Um, you know, are you simulating space, uh, getting that air in it? Are you, uh, as these wonderful books that uh, Shelby brought in, uh, Nola, are you, I mean, this fabulous sort of purity of color um, just flat on the paper? You know, yet, yet he's also indicating space in and around. Here's another one. He seems to have a little motif for how he uh, gives that information. So that is why I gave those. So it, they bear a moment of um, looking at and, and thinking about your translation um, into the two dimensions of paintings and their details. And how, what happens between this painting, say, this lovely John William Hill, probably a friend of Hans <laughs> Worthington. What happens between him, with, between this and this? Uh, so, observe, observe, observe. Uh, there are many things that happen between this and this, and I think it bears big um, study. The, I mean, we could just start listing. First place, the format is different. We have a uh, you know, horizontal, 
rectangle. This is essentially a square. Are those two different paintings, or is that a blow This is a detail, of detail. from yeah. here. It Does seems to be so much more intense. The colors seem yeah. more intense, which isn't necessarily absolutely true. I think it's the ratio. I'm sure Alvarez and other, you know, people who tackle this continuously would say that the concentration in in this space. It was, makes it seem um, stronger. Uh, what, what did you say? What was the other word you said? Uh, was it? The colors seem more intense. Intense. Yeah. Um, so you could, you know, you could take something. This gets, in a sense, watered down mm -hmm. because there is more space. There's more light around it, um, and all of those things enter into what you might decide. To do when you decide whether you're going to have a very a concentrated, say, piece like this, with the borders chunked up against it. I think this is out here. And that's the other word I want to bring up, uh, propped. Because we, um, in our own, looking at our work, and when we have printed teeth, are constantly cropping. You know, we, we might put up a mat to say, and, you know, on Sunday's piece, and everyone say, yes, good. That, um, why, why does that happen? Sometimes it's because it's just simply new. You know, you look at it here, sitting up here, and then we do a little bit of fiddling with it with a map, and it's a slightly different format or whatever. We, we look, we, we do concentrate better sometimes, you know, just because we're forcing ourselves. So sometimes that's all it is. Um, but it also usually means that there's something that you might prefer. I mean, that, that is better about uh, one, but getting rid of, uh, you know, a whole piece of whatever, um, and just taking one area, um, that, that could be totally true. And changing that ratio can make a very different painting. And, and being, being aware of this, I mean, because we are aware of it, um, but from the beginning, when you choose what you're going to do, you're starting with an edit right there, and um, you know you have to remember that you're not um, you're not. If we were outside, as this is simulating, uh -huh, um, you would you immediately have to start editing. You're not probably going to do you know everything that you know, 180 vision can help with. You're going to make that first edit, and then you're going to start making more. So thinking about that from the beginning, you're editing, making that decision, and, and trying to maybe articulate it so you say, you know, if I come in here, that ratio to the edge of the paper and the, that negative area between those branches and the top or whatever is going to be a very, um, it's going to be better. Here's, here's the detail. Uh, cropping, editing, whatever um, is, in this case, is, is huge. I mean, it's major. It's more than just a, a perceptions of spaces and negative areas. Because this, when you crop out to him holding the turtle, you know, it becomes another, a very different state of, of uh, you know, it's one, it's one person, one turtle, one whatever. Um, here's Joseph Raphael. That's a detail. Again, what happens and what is different and why? And here is this. Um, what, what do we see? So when you go at whatever you're going to paint, anytime, all of this perception comes into play. You know, where are the edges of your paper? Sometimes, I, you know, you, everybody sort of has their way of finding themselves on the paper. You know, how do you find yourself? Are you accepting those outer edges of the paper? Are you coming in, painting from the center out? Uh, but we'll bring that up again a different time, but, which is a marvelous way of controlling your composition. When you just paint from your core, from your core, from the you know, from here then over there. The other thing I brought up was the diptych, and I'm, I may not just go into that a lot, but I'm throwing the diptych thought out another contrived focusing, I don't want to say gimmick, because it's not a gimmick, though it can be, but it's a, it's a device, that's, that's the 
positive use of the human device. Um, it's a device that gives you another way of how am I personally, what is my view on this? Then you need to have a reason that it's not just a pain, painting cut in half. At least I feel. Um, but you know, often that it may be the way somebody does it. I think it can be just a, two, two sides of the thing and you know, two pieces of paper. There are people who also do that because they want to do a bigger thing, but you have to use two pieces of paper. So that's another kind of diptych thing. Um, but when you do a diptych, you're doubling the kind of thinking of this ratio to the edges, because you have two uh, rectangles of some sort. So that's another thing you can talk about. When painting from the middle out, mm -hmm. which I tried once or so, um, you don't have your composition drawn out first. I Not necessarily, no. At least when I, I do it, I might draw the, the core. Have it in your head. At, yeah, I mean, I might start with, um, I don't know if this is too great an example, but I might start with, you know, these elements yeah. here. This isn't a very large area, so, but, and then it's it's a Demuthian. I was going to say, it yeah, sounds like Demuth, Demuth, Demuth again. Um, the, the, because the radiating from from the center to it is also a, a it can be a very good way if you're having any trouble if you're working with a figure or even a landscape um, of getting those relationships. And this may not be too good, but this is this is the landscape you both. Um, if you work from here out, you are more, you're relating each element as it comes to its neighbor, you know, whether it's a tree and you think, oh, wait a minute, that, I mean, this may not be ever important to you, but, you know, that tree is so much bigger uh, than the other tree, or that tree is definitely behind. Um, if, you, if you move these things in rate relationship to each um, element, trees, say a figure, trying to put a figure in a chair sitting up there, um, you know, if you get where, where her hip hits the edge of the table or whatever, you know, just you keep, you keep relating. It's, a, it's not a crutch, but it's a, it's a good way of organizing. So you're editing as you go along? Yeah, and you're editing as you go along. I mean, one could say that you just sort of stop when you come to the edge, sort of, oh, um, you may not go to the edge, but um, uh, you are kind of editing. And you're composing. And composing. And you're and you're making little mini decisions each time, sort of. Um, if if I thought to talk about this when I was doing this last week, um, where something abuts, you're making a decision of, you know, I need a dark there to punch that out, or you know, if I put that stripe coming from here and under and beyond the glass, it's going to give me the edge of the glass. Uh, this color contrast. I mean, each one is a little decision, which actually is probably less effortful than that makes it sound. I love working from the center out because 90% uh, of it for me is responding, again, to the, not accidents, but what, what goes onto the paper. Some of it could be an accident. You put something, critically in the UPO, you might put something in the deck, ooh, and then ah. Um, uh, I really can use that. Uh, and so you are going to respond to that with your next touch. And you just you roll. It's very... Well, it's like a jigsaw puzzle to me. Yeah, and it is like a jigsaw. Try working from the outside in. Good luck. I, I'm just well, thinking about, about that. When you do a landscape and you lay in your sky and in the clouds, that's not working from inside. No, that would be... So, and, uh, that would be copying. Yeah. <laughs> copying? Oh, no. If only I could copy. Um, um, yeah, that, that would be, I mean, sort of organizing the whole sheet and saying, I'm going to have sky here, whatever. Um, and you would probably be working much more openly.